Now we're talking about deflections. These deflections formulas are all based on the theory that we have small angle approximations. So if you're ever doing any of these problems, keep in mind that theta equals tangent of theta, which is the same thing as the slope or the change in deflection over your change in x. That's just slope. So keep that in mind as you do these problems. Anyway, we're going to derive a special case where it's a cantilever and we have our load of P directly at the end. So I got this particular one from the back of the book and we're just going to derive it. Let's go for it. First thing I start with is I try to find my equation for moment. And I'll do that by using a free body diagram. All right, we're measuring x from this side. So this is x equals 0 and x equals L. You can switch it however you want. As long as your, your formula is consistent with your limits, you're fine. So that means this distance would be the length minus x. We have our load here, and we want to know our m of x. Okay, so if I sum the moments at the cut, I have a negative moment, and I have another negative moment. So our m of x, if I just add that to the other side, negative p times the quantity of l minus x. It's looking in a good direction so far. So let me write, copy that up here. I'll leave it L minus X because X can't be bigger than L. And that means that this quantity is going to be positive, which is just convenient for integration. We're using the fact that EI, the double derivative of the deflection, equals the moment. That means that our EI for our slope, integration, negative p l minus x dx. That's, I can take the negative p out. That's going to be l times x minus x squared divided by 2. You can't forget the integration constant. I'm sure we'll have another one. So, What do we know about our slope? Well, I could tell that this is going to be bending down at some slope, but we don't know how much it's bending down. However, anytime you have a fixed support, that resists rotation, meaning that the slope at our left end never changes, which means since it starts at zero, it ends at zero. It's always zero. So I can say our slope at zero equals zero, which equals negative p l times zero minus zero squared divided by two plus c one. And since all of that goes to zero, C1 equals zero. So our final slope equation equals negative P LX minus X squared divided by two. And plus zero, so I don't have to write it. But we're looking for the deflection curve, so I have to integrate again. All right, that equals negative P LX squared divided by two minus X to the third divided by sixth plus C2, another integration constant. Can't forget those. All right, let's see what our condition is. As far as deflection is concerned, our right side is going to be moving up or down, but our left side is not. So the deflection on the left side when x equals zero, as we defined it, is zero. So let's plug that in and solve for C2. And sure enough, this whole thing goes to zero, C2 equals zero. Which means EI of x equals negative P L x squared divided by two plus zero. And then we divide the EX over. I'll factor out both of those x squareds. Factor out this one sixth, put that next to the EI, 
and that leaves us with 3L minus X. And let's see if that, it does match in fact. So we win, and that's the problem.